From shopping, you go to di digital publishing. Remco Kosser is the uh, managing director of Woodwing Asia Pacific Kuala Lumpur, a software company for multi-channel digital publishing. It is a market-leading solution for workflow inefficiency in content creation and a standard for delivering interactive content to readers. He established Woodwing presence in Asia Pacific and the Asia Pacific by setting up a and facilitating a distribution network in the region. Remco is a vice. Uh, chair of the Malaysian Dutch Business Council and has a business administration degree from Erasmus University, uh, Rotterdam, Netherlands. To talk about the next wave of digital publishing, we have Remco Koster. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's talk tablets, I would say. I love the subject. Um, I'm not used to talking to a marketing-oriented audience. Uh, I'm used to talking to uh, publishers, and in a lesser extent, uh, but increasingly more uh, digital agencies. Um, yeah, but I hope uh, the, the presentation links up a little bit with the presentations, I think, uh, especially from the early uh, part of this afternoon. First, I would like to introduce Woodring. It's a Dutch company, very briefly. It's very Dutch. Founded in 2000. We've got a lot of customers, magazine publishers, newspaper publishers, book publishers, corporate publishers, got a lot of brands, also agencies as customers, even the United Nations uh, we have as a customer. Traditionally, for more print-oriented uh, products. So what we do is we build software for multi-channel publishing. And multi-channels are, as you can see, print, web, social, email, mobile, and very importantly nowadays, uh, tablets. And what we do is we... Uh, actually came, became big using uh, our software to help uh, publishers print uh, their, their publications more, more efficiently and to produce them more efficiently. But recently we've become more well known for tablet publishing and helping publishers uh, around the region, uh, here in APEC, but around the world as well, uh, publish their content uh, to the iPad. So we like to improve efficiency and to monetize the channels. We do see the tablet as a channel. Uh, it's an interesting presentation earlier on where mobile was not a channel. Uh, it's an interesting uh, concept as well. We do see it as a channel that uh, can be monetized. And tablets basically have caused a big revolution in publishing. This is sort of the history of uh, Time magazine, where you can see Time magazine going from, going from uh, yeah, an old printing press and then all of a sudden there's a, a quick acceleration in the 80s and 90s uh, towards computer electric, electronic publishing. And we launched, together with, uh, with uh, Time magazine, the first ever issue uh, on the uh, iPad uh, by a publisher in the US. Of course, it did help to put Steve Jobs on that front page to get the app approved quickly. Uh, that, that did help a lot. And uh, yeah, so, so far it's been a very interesting uh, very interesting ride. However, the iPad was not the first tablet. Long history, good graphics. Not so lightweight. I think it's a good uh, it's a good video eh, to, to put things a little bit into perspective and you know if I go to conferences now or if I walk around or if I'm in a Starbucks I just cannot imagine that there's no iPad anymore even though it was only two years ago that the iPad uh, was launched it's become such a natural part of my life of our customers life and also 
yeah, a very uh, interesting part of our customers' lives, uh, of our publishers' lives, uh, because a lot of the publishers in Europe and the US, they're not blessed with increasing ad spend like a lot of the publishers in this part of the world. In Indonesia, uh, for example, the ad spend uh, for newspapers, uh, that's the, the, the print ad spend, increased 8% last year. For magazines, that was 6%. It's not a lot of countries and not a lot of areas in the world where you can say that. So it, it's, it's a very important uh, channel for these uh, publishers. And it's been a, quite a battlefield as well. Uh, this is Sports Illustrated also one of our customers in the US. And Steve Jobs also promised in his autobiography that he was going to basically revolutionize digital publishing. And I think he did do that. Because it brings basically new advertising opportunities for publishers, new distribution opportunities, yes, but also new advertising uh, opportunities. And you can see websites, I think, failed advertising a little bit. A lot of people expect things for free. Uh, brands, uh, you know, don't really want to advertise or pay a lot of money to advertise. It's been a bit of a struggle to grow it uh, significantly. Although in the U.S., uh, ad spend uh, for digital is quite uh, is quite healthy now. Uh, in some parts of this world, not so much. Philippine, I believe, digital ad spend is between one and two percent. In Malaysia, it's less than one percent. In Indonesia, I believe it's five to six percent. So there, you already see uh, more more growth in uh, in digital ad spend. But yeah, tables, tablets uh, fuel ad engagement. There's also a new threat for publishers. If publishers don't create interactive uh, publications uh, or publications that offer advertisers an engaging uh, advertising experience, brands will start their own tablet experiences and also become our customers. And that's what made me come to events like these and increasingly so where a lot of brands, they want to advertise in a digital uh, or in an iPad app, in our experience. Um, you know, the, the, the advertising agencies don't really know how to build anything other than a HTML5 sort of uh, website. They cannot really create uh, yeah, good interactive uh, experiences. One of our customers, ABS CBN, has an app, uh, the, uh, Metro Manila. If uh, Mercedes wants to have an interactive ad with hotspots that you can touch and video to play in uh, that specific uh, publication. Uh, the agencies uh, sort of next week, then the agencies at the moment don't know how to do that, except provide a website. So that's a, that's a challenge, I think. And uh, yeah, as I th said, a threat for publishers as well if they don't produce engaging apps. A lot of publishers also see Apple and Amazon taking cuts and see them as an enemy rather than as a friend, where we are actually telling the publishers, well, actually, Apple and Amazon are your best friends. They do take a cut, but they provide an awesome framework for you to, to sell into in a marketplace that you can sell your content into. And so they're basically your friends, not your enemies. And there's a lot of education we had to do also as a technology vendor, which is quite funny, because traditionally you sell software and you know, someone implements it and then the customer is happy or not happy, depends. Hopefully mostly happy. Uh, now, we need to explain to Apple what publishing is or what publishers want, uh, what their needs are, what their fears are, what their demands are. And we need to tell also publishers what Apple wants, how Apple works, how the iTunes store works, how subscriptions work, why do you, why do you have to be on newsstand? So there's a lot of consulting work uh, and, a, and a lot of mediation work uh, that uh, has happened over the last couple of years. Because these stores give publishers uh, brand new ways to monetize uh, their content. They can sell subscriptions, they can sell individual issues. There's multiple payment options. People can subscribe through the App Store, for example, or people can have their own digital, or publisher can have their own uh, subscription system that then can integrate and they can give access to the content on the digital platform uh, to these, uh, yeah, their own customers. And for apps, I think there's a lot of different flavors out there at the moment. There's a lot of different publishers. The brands have done different, different things. Uh, some of them uh, developed a solution that's more streamed, it's sort of like a glorified website. The USA Today, I think, is an example of that. Uh, it's, it's cheap. It's easy to reproduce, 
it's difficult to get people to pay for advertising in it because there's not a lot of interactivity in it and you know people cannot engage with the advertising so it's a bit limited and only partly it works offline uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of publishers and a lot of brands still see the tablet as a as a web browser uh, they don't realize but i think in the philippines it's different that uh, and it just came up in the other discussion as well that the internet connectivity is not so good everywhere we see that also in indonesia you have to create an application an iPad application or an Android application that uses very heavily off on, on, on the in online content is a little bit of a shame. You know, you have to prepare uh, and help your, 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 your consumers by giving them the content uh, in an offline manner and combine it with an online uh, component. Then you have uh, personalized magazines, for example, Zinio, uh, which basically is very cheap because Zinio says, well, you can give it to us for free. We just use your print PDF. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, it's difficult, again, to get people to pay for it because they feel that okay, it's not a good experience. You're pinching and zooming. And it just doesn't give you yeah, the, the, the nice things the tablet uh, can give you. Uh, you know, if you have infographics, it's nice to touch things and then things pop up. You can actually, in quite a compact space, put quite a lot of information and, and engagement. So that doesn't really uh, uh, give... Uh, Publishers and brands, I think, uh, a lot of monetization option. PDF view is a little bit similar to that. I said PDF view is very simple. You've got a print uh, print product, and in a sense, print ads, and you just throw it on uh, on the uh, on the iPad and let people pinch and zoom. And uh, uh, one of our, our, our publishers, uh, New Zealand Herald, uh, had a nice comparison. He said if publisher does that, they actually pretend. Uh, basically, they throw a blanket over a television and pretend that it's a radio, and it's not. You know, it's a real shame that you do that. You don't get the best uh, experience. So we specialize in, in providing designed issues. So basically, give you, giving you an engaging experience. You've got front pages of magazines that play video, that have things happening. You can have ads, like uh, Nivea ads, that you can scratch, you can touch, and things happen. Uh, make it a much more exciting uh, uh, experience. That's where where we see uh, the future. And of course, you've got HTML5 uh, apps as well uh, that uh, that are popular. But again, uh, difficult to pay for. Uh, it only partly works offline. And uh, yeah, store uh, and monetization is a little bit difficult. But of course, you also always have naysayers. I like this graph. This is the Gartner hype curve. And I think the iPad definitely went through this hype curve, uh, almost picture-perfect way. You saw in 2010 when it was launched, you see a lot of early adopters, you know, also a lot of early uh, customers. And uh, but actually, it was hyped a little bit too much too soon, you know. So and then when the advertising doesn't come in, you know, a lot of publishers and brands say, well, you know, I'll just stick to Zinio or I will just do a PDF or I will just focus my effort on uh, on mobile phones or you know, it's uh, let 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 it mature a little bit, and uh, so then you see a lot of people getting very disappointed. You get into a trough of disillusionment, which you can see there. Then after that, you have uh, second generation products, which we've seen uh, come along uh, now. It also has to do with uh, with the, the adoption uh, rate. You see, the trough is around less than five percent of potential audience that has adopted fully. Now, some countries in the region in APEC, uh, this adoption is going a little bit faster than others. Uh, I've seen a very very slow early adoption in Australia and a very quick uh, uh, catch up. I think there's between two and a half and three million iPads now in Australia on a population of what 25 uh, million people. So that's that's coming towards uh, the 20% uh, saturation uh, rate where it really becomes interesting to uh, yeah to do something really engaging on uh, on the iPad. So you've got a lot of you know, what we call the first phase, uh, early presence and experience. Volume and engagement grows. Now, I think you've already seen a lot of statistics today and yesterday about mobile growth and iPad sales and tablet sales and growth. So everybody knows that, you know, it's here to stay, it's growing. But the next wave is really, you know, how to create, how to turn this, these experiences, how to turn it into money. And, and also, how do I do that more efficiently? And you've got Microsoft coming out with a new uh, new platform now for uh, tablets. You've got Android coming out with new 
operating systems and contrary to the earlier video in those when the video was made it was the old Android system that was actually for mobile phones I remember using the Galaxy Tab and it felt like a glorified phone uh, iPhone for iPad never felt like that for me but now with Jelly Bean I think uh, Android really improved and, and, and matured into a pretty good platform <coughs> for uh, for tablets I also believe in this part of the world Android is also more important uh, in Definitely in Indonesia, I've got a lot of statistics. In Thailand, for example, you have between 30 and 40 percent of the tablets are, are actually Androids. Whereas in the US, I think it's uh, about 10 to 15 percent. So in developed countries, the, the, the iOS is, uh, is uh, gaining much more traction. So a lot of publishers there can still say, well, you know, I'm not going to do anything with Android yet until it matures. I think in this part of the world, I believe in the Philippines as well, you see many more Android uh, tablets. Cost is much more uh, an issue. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, and also of course uh, piracy is still an issue. Android is a little bit easier to install, uh, you know, uh, a pirated uh, apps. So you see Android having a much much bigger traction here, percentage-wise, than in Western countries. What do publishers want to see? Now publishers don't want to see the curve on the left, where basically the revenue is going up, but the cost is also going up quite quite fast. So it's very difficult to actually make money on it. You know, you've got new websites you want to do, you have to spend more money, and, you know, the, the, the online business is not really that, uh, that, uh, that profitable. This is for websites. Now, if you see the desired tablet, public, tablet business, uh, yeah, the desired business model is uh, very different. You see the cost slightly increasing, and you see the revenue increasing much faster. So that's, that's uh, I think, an important thing uh, for publishers to, uh, to be aware of. And for that, it's imp important to improve the efficiency and also to monetize the channels uh, better. Now, we work together with Adobe uh, Digital Publishing uh, Platform since November last year. Before that, Adobe wasn't really ready. We built our own, uh, our, our own apps. Uh, Adobe has some interesting statistics, interesting business insights from uh, Western countries, which we can learn from. We have an ideal opportunity here in this part of the world, and I think that goes also for, for, for uh, the, uh, the previous uh, panel discussion, to learn from what has happened in, uh, in uh, Western uh, countries, in developed uh, countries. And one of the things that, uh, because it will eventually happen here, is uh, that 68% uh, of digital publishing's downloads are actually paid for. And the interesting statistics are that 15% still buy single issues just when they go, as if they would go to a magazine uh, store. 26% uh, go through subscriptions through the App Store. And some publishers are really slow to adopt to this. Because they said, well, we, you know, if we have subscribers, our own subscribers, we know a lot about them, and we need that for our marketing efforts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So some publishers, they, 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 yeah, they were a bit stubborn and uh, didn't uh, want to sell uh, digital uh, subscriptions through iTunes. Even our own customer timing didn't want to do that. Uh, they had to hire, uh, even though we've been telling that already for them for a couple of years, uh, but they had to hire a very expensive uh, company called Bain & Co. Uh, to tell them that uh, they had to start selling iTunes subscriptions. So they're doing that now. And you can see, but still, there's a good possibility for direct entitlement, uh, so the publisher's own subscription uh, system. Interesting is, and that's also for advertising, very interesting, that readers engage with 48% of interactive features that are used in the DPS publication. So... You know, if you have, say, 20 pages with hotspots videos, you know, the designer can be happy because he has, he's spending all this time build, making nice interactive uh, publications. But actually, 48% of the features that he's building are actually being used by uh, the consumers, by the readers. And especially video, but also web views are very popular. Uh, web components are very nice to combine in, in, with offline components for example you can include polls that are online um, so there's a lot of nice nice things you can do with uh, what with HTML5 actually building that inside your offline uh, experience and also interesting that they open up the publications on an average five times per month which if you go into the statistics of the average app on your iPad is quite high I think there's been some uh, some research done that some apps are only opened once every two months because people have so many apps on their, uh, on their iPad. So five times per month is pretty good. And 55%, and that's important also for advertising, 
spend more than 25 minutes in them. So you've got a very high quality uh, user uh, experience. iTunes subscriptions, as I said, uh, some publishers were slow, some publishers were fast. I think most publishers in the US are now selling uh, iTunes subscriptions. Uh, Popular Science was first and they sold 10,000 subscriptions in the first six weeks. Now, they've got about 1.2 million print subscribers, so for them it's still small, but it's significant and it's somewhere to, to, to start building on, uh, on uh, and, and, and most important, it's, it's profitable for them uh, to produce engaging uh, content. Apple Newsstand, when, when magazines launch and newspaper launch on, on newsstands, uh, you know, that you can also very clearly see a huge spike in, in downloads. Also, newsstand is great because it automatically up, you know, downloads, the, the, the iPad automatically downloads the content if you're a subscriber to your device, which again, in low bandwidth countries, is nice. At night, when you're sleeping, you know, when uh, normally in Europe it might take 10 minutes for a newspaper to download, here in the Philippines it might take two or three hours to download over 3G, or even over an internet connection that's not that fast. It takes just longer here. And in Indonesia, that's also the case. So in those countries, it's extremely important to be on newsstand to, to do this background uh, download. So when you wake up, you've got the content right in front of you. Also, if publishers don't decide to do interactive publications, you've got also an interesting phenomenon, is you've got new kids on the block, basically, doing it. So there's people sitting on content, sitting on beautiful stories and photos, and you know this shop on the corner of your street with four people all of a sudden uh, publishes the highest rated travel magazine in the App Store in the U.S. with 40,000 new consumers every month, uh, and that those are uh, Dutch entrepreneurs, and basically they uh, they they put very nice content into uh, into into the magazine. And it's interesting they don't follow this traditional business model publishers like to follow even on the tablet. They say, oh, January issue in print. Let's make a January issue in the tablet and the iPad. And I'm always saying, why? Why would you do that? So what TRVL do is they just basically have city specials or, or subject specials. So this is about game parks. So one issue only about game parks. One issue about Paris. One issue about Manila or the Philippines. So you've got bite-sized chunks that are not too large to download with a nice, uh, engaging uh, content. I did manage to convince Vogue in Australia, uh, News Limited, to follow that as well. And they, for example, I, I said to them, you know, you're doing all these beautiful fashion shoots, photo shoots. How many of those photos and videos actually end up in your print magazine? Why don't you make a nice, nice uh, tablet issue around that? Because you can put all these videos in there, all these photos in there that they did, and they're doing really well. So, so you know, you have to also take a step back and, and look at it uh, in a more out of the And they basically look at uh, how, how much publishers acti actually optimize the content that they have for the tablet. So how many, they, do they use hotspots? Do all the links work? Do they use nice videos? You know, do they optimize uh, the experience? It was the only app in the whole Asia Pacific region that ended up in the top 10 of, uh, their, uh, of their survey. It was also sponsored by the Thai Tourism Board. Very interesting, Joe Zeff design. Actually, this is paid content. Uh, made uh, an app, Final Hours of Portal 2. It's a design studio, actually, that used to do you know, advertising uh, campaigns and, and things like that. They decided, well, you know, the publishers, we, 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 we really love this platform. The publishers are not doing much with it. We just build our own apps. So basically, they built Final Hours of Portal 2. Became the number one iPad app within one week in the US App Store. So they were actually selling it for money, and you know, it, this, they, 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 this guy is now speaking at events all over the world, explaining how he, as a digital agency, all of a sudden, uh, you know, s produces his own apps. Time Inc. even hires him uh, to do work for them. The memorial issue of 9/11 uh, that Time uh, published uh, late last year was uh, fully designed by uh, Joseph. George Steinmetz, a very famous photographer. His photos and his idea for he, he, he basically pitched the National Geographic. National Geographic, they were still uh, thinking Zinio, you know, putting a putting a PDF on the iPad. So, so George Steinmetz approached Joseph. He said, "Can you make this app for us?" And Joseph said, "Sure." Made this beautiful app. Also became one of the biggest uh, selling selling commercial iPad uh, apps in the in the U.S.
So it goes to show you if you don't do it, if the publisher doesn't do it, someone else will do it and make money with it. And Joseph also had an interesting uh, quote. He says, what you did before belongs in a scrapbook. You know, uh, he's a New Yorker, <laughs> very direct. What you do next is what really matters. Uh, and focus, extend your brand, turn passive experience into active ones, and also price it sensibly. I see some publishers really charge crazy money for the magazines, and then people complain about it. You get a one-star or two-star rating in the app store. People saying, well, I like the magazine, but I don't want to pay that much for it. So publishers really are on cro at crossroads. And brands and agencies as well. I'm now also increasingly talking to agencies because they don't know at the moment or they don't have the tools at the moment to produce these, uh, these ads. They've got InDesign to create PDF ads, so that's not a problem to supply to the, to the, to the, uh, to the customers, to the publishers. They can build web uh, ads, no problem. Banner ads and things like that, no problem. Uh, but to create nice interactive uh, advertising is a problem. They just don't know how to do it and the publishers you know, that I've been talking to are increasingly getting frustrated with the agencies not uh, being able to offer them uh, interactive ads in their, uh, in their magazines. And some even now are contemplating setting up their own agencies. So that's not what uh, the agencies want, I believe. So basically, uh, publishers require new tools because they want to do, do easy uh, launch of new titles, monetize efficiently. That's basically where we come in. So this is the pitch. Uh, so you use Woodwing and Adobe D DPS to do that, but this is not a pitch presentation. So I will just show you the engagement uh, that you can create with, uh, with DPS. You can, you know, pan and zoom. You can have 360 uh, degree uh, images. You can in integrate web content, hyperlinks, audio, panorama, uh, you know, slideshows. There's so many things you can do. It's also important, uh, of course, to be able to monetize it. So, so we provide you with the technology that makes it easy for you to be in iTunes, to be in the App Store, to be on newsstand, and to also combine it with your existing subscription systems. And also we help you monetize uh, by creating uh, yeah, engagement, engaging advertisement. And also very important is analytics. A lot of, lot of publishers and a lot of, lot of advertising agents as well, you know, what's the analytics? How, how many times have people clicked? What are the metrics? The problem is they still approach it as a website. So they say, well, so what are the click-throughs? You know, that's not important for a, for a tablet application. It, if people, it's important how long people watch a video. You know, it's what YouTube is now also accepted uh, when you look at the most popular videos. YouTube now also looks at how long people have actually watched a video to rate it high or, or low. It's important to see that people actually engage with 48% of the digital features the interactive features, those are the ones that are important. And we basically create the tools to make it easy to uh, produce all of this. Now, what do publishers say? They say organize differently, mix print and online. In Australia, News Limited even axed most of their digital uh, departments and said, well, you know, the individual uh, publishers, they can do their own uh, digital uh, content uh, better rather than having a si silo approach where you have a digital department, you have a print department, that, that doesn't really work. So organize differently, mix print and online. And measurement is still the elephant in the room. Now this is a big piece of text, normally I don't like to put this much text in it, but it's still in a very interesting uh, quote actually from uh, this week, uh, published on, uh, on uh, Digital Market Asia. And uh, basically it says that a lot of publishers and a lot of brands, a lot of agencies, they don't do much in terms of interactive uh, applications because they don't have the metrics yet. But what the Microsoft says, well, you know, uh, when you go to, uh, to get a, learn an instrument, you don't measure the return on your investment on a per lesson basis. You measure your investment on the whole uh, combinations of lessons. So why would I do this differently for an iPad app or for, for other digital uh, ventures that you do, which is an interesting an interesting uh, thought. So basically he says there's no excuse uh, to use measurement as an excuse not to do something. Uh, hey, you have to be visionary in, in, in what you do. So this uh, I think is an interesting, uh, he's now he's CEO of Microsoft APEC, he's based in uh, Jakarta. He's also a keynote speaker at uh, many uh, industry events. And also very important for designers, and I like uh, Dr. Mario Garcia, is a very famous newspaper designer. I don't know how, how many people in the room are newspaper uh, publishers. Uh, but he says you have to design not only for the eyes and the ears, but also for the happy finger. 
And I think also in the pre one of the previous presentations, uh, it was said that if uh, that one of the children goes to the TV, wants to sli swipe it, and if nothing happens, he gets upset. And actually, your finger also, if, he sees a if your finger sees a photo, you want to click it. If you can have, give people an iPad that have never used it, first thing they do is try to swipe or, or touch it. If then nothing happens, then you've made a mistake as a, as a designer. So to recap, tablets are here to stay. First wave has happened. I think in the Philippines, not so much yet. Uh, we don't have that many customers here. We, we have more customers in Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Malaysia. Uh, I see a lot of publishers here being very you know, conservative, uh, throwing PDFs uh, on, uh, on, the, uh, on the iPad. Uh, but the next wave will definitely be about monetization and uh, efficiency with the new platforms coming up. You know, a lot of publishers have still built their own uh, uh, technology to uh, do certain things. I think that is increasingly m difficult to maintain as more, diff more platforms come up, more operating system versions come up, iOS 6 is coming up, Jelly Bean just came out, Microsoft platform uh, uh, is coming out on uh, tablets. So to do that all yourself, I think, is difficult, and that's where we can uh, come in and, uh, and help. And uh, we call this uh, smart publishing. So this is my presentation. Don't know if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Did I make Costa. up the time a little bit? You can still take <laughs> a couple of questions. I have if a question. If you have any questions, yes. I have a question yeah. myself. You mentioned a while ago uh, mm -hmm. the, he, the, the situation here in the Philippines. Yes. Uh, but you can correct me if I'm wrong if uh, any of you are uh, part of a publishing company here. Not a lot of publications going digital. Not a lot of subscribers either. Uh, how do you push that wave here in the Philippines? Do you, well, you have could, public, yeah. more digital publications, so there will be more subscribers. Well, it's a bit of catch twenty two, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. if you're going to say, well, you know, there's not a lot of diff not a lot of customers for it, yeah, because there's no content for it. So, uh, the, you know, the CEO of Gramedia, Compass Gramedia, is the biggest publisher in Indonesia. He's also a good friend, uh, a friend of mine, and he said, he said he had a, basically, he was asked in a, in a, in a conference why he was doing all these experiments because they've been the number one in Indonesia in terms of digital experiments. Uh, some work, some don't work. But he, he, wants, he keeps trying and he said, well, you know, in the old days when we launched the newspaper, we accepted that the newspaper would take five years to become profitable, sort of a rule of thumb. Uh, when, we launch, when we do new products, what we do is we always believe there's a heaven. So we believe that, you know, uh, there, there is a heaven out there. It will become profitable. If you don't do it, you might yourself as well lock yourself up in a cave. So there's no excuse not to do... Uh, uh, digital publishing because uh, either the metrics are not there or you think the customers are not there. It's also not a lot of research done by these publishers. And a lot of the publishers are also afraid still, uh, like the publishers in the US used to be, and Europe, that it would cannibalize uh, print. Right, right. But in the US, of course, they kept on uh, denying, denying, and then basically the advertising uh, just dropped off the cliff. Well, I do know a number of people, a number of my friends, subscribing to uh, digital publications yes. of... Uh, magazines, newspapers in yeah. other countries. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering why uh, the, the publishers here in the Philippines aren't picking up. If these people are uh, subscribing to newspapers and magazines from other countries, then why don't they start it here? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, as I said, uh, we have a customer here, ABS-CBN, who've been basically one of the first... Yes, I'm pretty in, familiar in, with the company. Yeah, in, 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 in Manila uh, or in the Philippines, and they were one of the first in Asia, actually, on the iPad. Yes, uh, so, so they were one of Metro the early magazine. ones. Yeah, Metro Magazine, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of conservatism out uh, out here still. Yeah. Whereas I see in Thailand and Indonesia a more willingness to 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 experiment and to uh, yeah to put uh, money in, in mm -hmm. into it. And it's I think like with any venture, and it's uh, like business lesson 101 is you have to try it, and if it doesn't work, let it fail quickly. <laughs> I think it's the yeah, but that's the approach Gramedia has done. I mean, mm -hmm. they've done a financial magazine on the, on the tablet, uh, on the iPad. Didn't work because the designers didn't really want, want it. So the, public, the, 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 the newspaper that, that was making it didn't, just didn't put the energy into it. Yeah. Then yeah. Gramedia said, okay, then I'll just stop it mm -hmm. because I'm not going to do it half. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it properly. And they had a huge uh, uh, campaign with Jarum, big cigarette manufacturer in Indonesia, I think the biggest, uh, that did a... a, a they did a campaign with Compass, a Ring of Fire campaign, where they go to all the different volcanoes and make uh, nice interactive explanations about how volcanoes work, videos of the expedition. Jarum sponsored that for a couple of million dollars. 
and the iPad uh, uh, edition was a very important part of that campaign. So it was TV, it was an integrated campaign, TV, radio, uh, print plus uh, iPad. Mm -hmm. And that iPad uh, uh, app actually is downloading more issues uh, than the daily newspaper that they do. <laughs> so it goes to show you if you experiment yeah. uh, and think out of the box and, and, and think of new products, I think, as a publisher, rather than just you know, slavishly following your print product, I think that's the road, uh, road uh, to, uh, to success. Okay, anyone here from publishing? It's, uh, yeah. A lot of agencies. Uh, publishers <laughs> oh, will be go. talking Good. to you at some stage, yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Do you have any questions, any uh, questions? for Mr. Koster? Okay, Remco Koster, uh, talking about the next wave of digital publishing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome.